Good morning and welcome to worship from Grace Lutheran Church. I apologize for the tech issues. The live stream is not working. We are recording and we post it to YouTube um, as soon after the worship service ends as is possible. Although we are not all gathered together in the same place, we are gathered together as a community of people who follow Jesus to worship, hear God's word, and pray together. Today is Reformation Day when we consider how the church needs to always be changing and reforming so that we can continue to share the good news of Jesus. Today we are also celebrating affirmation of baptism, the rite of confirmation for eight of our young people during worship this morning. This morning we do have a stewardship video announcement as soon as we can get that rolling. I do apologize when we tested it earlier this morning. The sound and the video are a little out of sync, so uh, we apologize for that. Here I come to say the day, Captain Obvious on the way. Sorry it's been so long, but I've been in quarantine. Oh, I've got awesome power, but an itty-bitty living space, and I've got such a crick in the neck. I'm tired of all this, as I'm sure you are too. Anyway, I'm here to tell you about a surprise coming your way early November. Oh, no, 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 this is a good surprise. Yeah, not like earlier in the year when we ran out toilet paper and I had to use 80 red sandpaper. Ouch. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Anyway, this surprise is about connections. Connections are very important. They're like, they're like suspenders. You know, the suspenders that keep my shorts up, keep them from falling down. Connections are very important. And obviously, during these COVID times, we're all missing a fellowship and a worship that we know and love. Obviously, even with live stream, Zoom, or emails, we still may feel disconnected from our Grace family. Oh. Well, sometime in early November, we will be sharing a little surprise for each and every Grace household to help reconnect in a small way. So, as Scar would say, be prepared. And keep your shirt on. No, I'm serious. Uh, keep your shirt on. It's, it's, it's cold outside. Yeah. So, uh, anticipation. It's making you wait, but you'll like it. Until next time, horizontal, horizontal away! That's enough. Now know that I am. 
us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. is from John, chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Word of God, word of life. Can you speak to God? Jesus is talking about freedom in our gospel reading for today. Not the kind of freedom that comes from living under the Constitution of the United States, or the kind of freedom being talked about and argued about around stay-at-home orders and mask mandates. This kind of freedom is broader and more important than that. It's freedom from fear of punishment for sin. It's freedom to be able to love and serve our neighbor and to follow Jesus. This kind of freedom comes from the gift of forgiveness and love from God to us. So freedom then for these young men and women who are affirming their baptism today in the rite of confirmation comes not in being done with confirmation classes, or serving as accolades, or turning in sermon notes. You might think that's freedom, and it is, in a sense, being done with these kinds of things. But this kind of freedom actually brings more responsibilities with it, not fewer. Because now you're making an intentional commitment to continue to live as a follower of Jesus. And this is not a once and done thing, this promise that you're making. We might only do it one time with white robes and red stoles and being in front of the congregation. But this promise that you're making today is just one part of your faith journey, this ongoing, life-changing process of growing in faith, obedience, and love for God, and love for the people around you. Now here at Grace, we ask confirmation students to spend several years together where they learn about 
the Bible and faith and church and their relationship with God. Faith story projects are the last thing that we ask these young men and women to do. We give them a list of questions about God and the Bible and being a disciple and worship and confirmation. And then they're to choose from amongst these questions, several of them to answer for their projects. So here today for you on video, in our own words and voices, are parts of what they have to say. Why do you want to be confirmed? I want to confirm that I will take what I have learned and put my faith to use in all areas of my life. This is my turn to choose how to show God's love to others in my own way. To show what I have been taught through my church, my family, and my godparents. Why do you come to worship service? I come to worship service to learn more about our God and to spend time with my family and grow stronger altogether. How do you stay in touch with God? I stay in touch with God by praying when I need a guide or when I need answers or money. I am Tegan Manioli. Why do you want to be confirmed? Uh, it means a lot to my family and I, and I want to feel like part of the church. What stood out for you? I meant a lot to you in confirmation classes. Um, what stood out was my friends being there with me to learn and have fun and grow our faith together. So, What did you learn in confirmation that surprised you? Uh, what surprised me was how many people were actually willing to die for Jesus and lie and just all those things. How would you change confirmation classes and the expectations of the confirmation program? Uh, I would wait longer to confirm kids so that they have a longer amount of time to learn and really understand what it means to become part of the church. Where do you see God in your life? How have you seen God at work in your life? I see God in my friends and family. And I feel like he sent my friends to me to try to make my life better, and they definitely have. <laughs> what passage or story of the Bible speaks to and why? Uh, Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. It, uh, just means a lot to know like, that there's somebody there always when you think that there's, no, there's nobody else there, like you're not alone. Why do I come to worship, worship services? <laughs> uh, even if I don't really want to get up in the morning, I come to worship services to feel closer with God, and it's nice to start the week off with people. Close to him and feeling his presence and stuff. Tell me about an encounter you had with God. Um, well, whenever I'm looking at a really beautiful sunset with my friends, or when the clouds are covering the sun and it just makes the sun shine through, like he's calling out to us and he's saying, like, hey, I'm there and stuff. Um, makes me feel close to him. Uh, what does my baptism mean to me? Uh, my baptism meant for me is that right away I was accepted into God's arms. It is important to me. What does Holy Communion mean to me? Holy Communion meant that I was another step closer to being part of the church and to the people around me. And it felt nice to be part of closer to God. Confirmed because I want to feel closer to God and take the next step in my journey in faith. 
change confirmation classes. I would change confirmation classes by making it one less year because we learned about the same stuff, or to ensure that the content each year in confirmation is different. Why do you come to worship? I come to worship because of the lessons it teaches us about God, the world around us, and it makes myself a better person. Do you invite others to worship? Why? I invite friends to confirmation class and confirmation camp. I want them to experience the activities and learn of me. What passage in the Bible speaks to you and why? One story that speaks to me is the story of David and Goliath. I like this story because no matter what David goes up against, he always tries his best. He shows how his courage and determination in his story and you can apply this in all your challenges in life. I want to be confirmed because I was baptized when I was a baby by the choice of my parents. My confirmation is an extension of my faith as I'm older and understand my relationship with God and more now. What meant a lot to me in confirmation was how Jesus never sinned when he was on your and saved us from our sins. I see God in my life by watching over me, making sure I'm a shelter and family that cares and supports me. God has also worked in my life when I had elbow surgery. Not only did I recover, but I'm able to do things that I used to be able to do. Why do I want to be confirmed? I want to be confirmed so I can become an adult member of the church and continue to grow my faith. What is something that meant a lot to you about confirmation class? What meant a lot to you about confirmation class? is definitely being submitted by people who have the same beliefs in me. What is something that I learned in confirmation class that surprised me? Well, it surprised me how few women are talked about in the Bible. What is the Bible passage that speaks to me the most? The Bible passage that speaks to me the most is John 13, 7. You may not understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. And who are the new people in my victory? Well, the new people in my faith journey are my parents, my family, my pastors, and my confirmation class, because they have shown me how they can benefit you in your life. I'm Sydney Hayes, and I want to be confirmed because it is the next step in my faith journey. Confirmation classes have taught me a lot about my faith and myself. The thing that meant the most to me in confirmation classes was that we got to learn a lot, but we also left a lot and had a fun time when we were learning. It was also nice that I got to hang out with a bunch of great people that I usually don't see much outside of church. Something that I learned in confirmation that surprised me is that a lot of the Bible stories can be connected to the world today. If I could change one thing about confirmation, I would probably offer the option for students to do independent learning and then get together as a group less frequently. This would make it easier for people who are busy with school and extracurriculars. When I stop and look around, I see God everywhere in my life. God is someone who is always there for us and can help us through anything. I understand who God is because he helps guide me through everything. God is also involved in the church and the world because he is there for everyone and helps everyone through their lives. Following Jesus makes a difference in my life by giving me something to focus on especially during challenging or difficult times. Other people know I am Christian by the way I live my life and treat others. I stay in touch with God through prayer. Even though I'm usually very busy, I know I can always find time to say a prayer. God has given me a healthy body, a supportive family, food, a place to live, and many more things. I can use these things to go to school, play sports, and ultimately make a difference in the world with my knowledge and service to others. I share the things that God has given me by volunteering and being nice to others. The key people in my faith journey have been my confirmation group and leaders, Kevin, Pastor Michelle, and my parents and grandma, who have all helped me further my knowledge and exploration of God. They have encouraged me to learn more about God and the Bible. I look forward to continuing my faith journey. Hi, I'm Amy Why do you want to be confirmed? It's a tradition and very meaningful in my family. Um, what passage or story in the Bible speaks to you and why? The story about the poor woman who gave everything she had and was met with ridicule compared to the rich man who gave a small portion of his wealth.
It shows that I should give everything I can, not just financially, to goodness in the world. Why do you come to worship services? I go to connect with God in a community setting and practice religion traditionally. My name is Tiana Sanger, and the reason I want to be confirmed is because I desire to continue and support the values of my faith journey and also to have a close relationship with God. The passage or story in the Bible that speaks to me is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. To be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgetting one another as God and Christ have forgiven you. That reason is that it speaks to me is because I am kind to one another and forgiving others. The key people in my faith journey are my grandma and my friend. My grandma has always prayed with me. She talks to me about her beliefs about God. At my grandma's house, they have always taught me to pray before we eat and before we go to bed. My friend has taken me to church and also talked to me about her beliefs about God. The reason that I am a Christian, a follower of Jesus, is because my life began being baptized. My mom has always supported me by encouraging me to live up to my expectations that Jesus has for all his children. Most important, the golden rule is to treat others how you want to be treated. There are words of wisdom there from these young men and women. Words of faith, words that reflect their freedom to follow Jesus. They know and they remind us today that Jesus gives us the most important and generous gift that we will ever receive. Total and complete forgiveness as well. There's no greater gift than this kind of freedom so that we can love God and serve others. Let's pray. Faithful God, thank you for the freedom you give us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Freedom from our sin, freedom to love you and to serve our neighbor. Help us to renew our commitment to follow Jesus every day. Amen. We continue now with affirmation of baptism for these young people, the rite of confirmation. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism today. Please stand as your names are read. I present Ella Berg, Tegan Bondioli, Dane Dockery, Ashton Fisher, Paige Gunderson, Sydney Hayes, Anna Price, and Keon Sanger, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that brought you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people. To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and to guide us. Please be seated. I invite Ella, Tegan, Dane, Ashton, and their parents to please come to the front. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ella the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and take in the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up and deign the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and ask in the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. You may return to your seats, and I invite Paige, Sydney, Anna, and Kiana and their parents to please come to the front. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up and page the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, 
and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sydney the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. And bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Anna the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. And bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Kiana the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. Bring her to everlasting life. Amen. You may return to your seats. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
Each prayer ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy. I invite you to respond by saying, Hear our prayer. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church seeks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and waters roar, may we, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind, especially recent and ongoing wildfires and storms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation as we decide who our next leaders will be. Help all voters to make wise and informed decisions. Guide our leaders in serving all people with justice, mercy, compassion, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for these grace members today, for Hazel Hasso, Brian and Christy Holt, Ken and Carol Hansen, and Joyce Heinz. We pray with, for people with health concerns, including Angela, Mark, Gary, Carol, Laura, Fred, Kale, and Marion. We pray for those who are grieving, including Gary Hess and his family at the death of his father. We pray for those we name now, either in silence or out loud. Bless each of these beloved children of yours with healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for medical staff at all levels and in all areas. Give them strength, patience, and courage. Provide the equipment and protection they need to care for their patients. Ensure they receive adequate rest and care for themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally during these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to Jesus, the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, Unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, pour out blessings upon you, so that the blessings of God, Creator, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.